Now at 10 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, an education leader demands the Biden administration reimburse his state for educating illegal immigrants and funding diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. Texas officials back a controversial new public school curriculum that would incorporate Christian lessons from the Bible as early as kindergarten. Plus, the community is reacting to the unexpected passing of Calhoun County Judge Richard Meyer. Well, good evening, everyone. It was a beautiful day today, but we got up to 87 degrees, but that cold front's going to have a lot to say. By tomorrow, we should drop a good 20 degrees. So we'll be talking about the cooler weather coming up. And some big news here in the crossroads. The Goliad Tigrettes volleyball team beats the Grandview Zebras to make it to the 3A Division I title. A highlight this game and a lot more coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Shauna Curry. And I'm Don Brubaker. The community is remembering Calhoun County Judge Richard Meyer as a friendly, caring county judge who always did his best for the community. Judge Meyer passed away unexpectedly in his sleep yesterday at the age of 74. Jonas Titus with the Victoria Economic Development Corporation says Judge Meyer strongly advocated for economic development, making the loss of Judge Meyer a loss for the entire community. It's a tremendous loss for Calhoun County, for VEDC, for Texas. Uh, Judge Meyer was a, was a great man, and he was a, one, of the, one of the most critical people in allowing VEDC to become a, regional, a true regional organization. Him putting his trust in us was instrumental in us having the credibility to work projects in Calhoun County, and uh, I know he would have loved to see all the projects that have announced uh, come to fruition and it's a uh, truly, truly a, a sad day. He was, he took great pride in being a leader and, uh, and an agent for, for positive change in Calhoun County and he'll, he'll definitely be missed. Calhoun County Commissioners will meet soon to discuss how to move forward. For now, Precinct 2 Commissioner Vern Lisey will act as pro tem county judge. There's also a regularly scheduled meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Commissioners plan to meet to support each other, but will not take action on any of the agenda items. A visitation for Judge Meyer is set for Thursday at the Bower Community Center in Port Lavaca beginning at 2 p.m. with a memorial service and rosary following at 5 p.m. A funeral mass is scheduled at 10 a.m. Friday at Our Lady of Sorrows Catholic Church in Victoria. Family members will hold a private burial at a later time. A new report shows the number of illegal immigrants crossing the southern border remained low in October. U.S. Border Patrol reports agents arrested more than 56,000 migrants last month. While this was a slight increase from September, the United States continues to see a downward trend in illegal border crossing since June. That's when the Biden administration put in place new asylum restrictions. Customs and Border Protection says agents have encountered on average about 1,800 illegal immigrants each day. The total number of Southwest border encounters last month represented a 69% drop from one year ago. The House Oversight Committee is set to mark up the Dismantled DEI Act tomorrow. This was introduced by District 27 Congressman Michael Cloud, and the bill aims to end government DEI programs by eliminating DEI offices, rolling back divisive regulations, and restoring a merit-based system. This markup is a crucial step for the bill to move forward. Oklahoma's education superintendent is demanding the Biden administration reimburse his state hundreds of millions of dollars. He wants the money back for educating illegal immigrants and diversity, equity, and inclusion DEI programs. Ryan Walters says illegal immigrants have been a burden to taxpayers to the tune of nearly $500 million. Those are dollars that could have been spent for a lot of other things. You, know, you look at teacher pay, you look at tutoring. Again, we've launched the largest tutoring programs in state history. Well, you know, that would have been a lot of money that could have been used for those things as well. And so the state bore the cost of a policy that the Biden administration knew that the states were incurring. 
Walters is telling Oklahoma teachers to show students a video where he prays for President-elect Trump. He's also pushing schools to include the Bible in lessons from grades 5 through 12. And just last week, he announced buying over 500 Trump-endorsed God Bless the USA Bibles for classrooms, spending nearly $25,000 in state funds. This brings us to today's viewer poll. Do you think DEI programs are necessary in schools? Absolutely yes, somewhat, or not at all. 65% uh, of you say you feel that those types of programs are not necessary in schools. So thank you to everyone who's voted tonight. If you haven't had a chance, uh, all you need to do is go to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to uh, give us your voice. Well, the Texas State Board of Education is expected to vote on whether the English and language arts textbooks provided by the state will feature stories from the Bible. The Texas Tribune reports tonight the board is showing support for Bible-infused curricula. The state may not turn public schools into Sunday schools. It's a policy battle that's been more than a year in the making. On Monday, the Texas State Board of Education heard the case for and against adopting a new statewide curriculum, which critics say includes too much Christian influence. They promote particular religious views over others, and in doing so, they violate parents' rights to determine the religious upbringing of their children. Inside the state building, Demonstrators sing hymns, openly embracing the curriculum's Christian influence as a positive factor. It is the First Amendment right to have access to this information. Attacking these materials merely because of their academic study of the Bible is denying students the freedom to learn and create a learning environment that is hostile to Christianity and religion. Studies of the proposed curriculum show it includes lessons from the life of Jesus, both in his life and his teachings, as well as other stories from the Bible. Schools across the state wouldn't be required to use the curriculum, but there is a financial incentive if they do so. The policy comes from legislation approved last year. Democrats largely opposed the policy, while Republicans largely supported it, though neither was unanimous. If approved, the curriculum could be rolled out by next school year. A Houston woman faces a human smuggling charge. Wharton County deputies arrested 37-year-old Monica Rubio. She's in the Wharton County Jail in lieu of $30,000 bond. A Houston man was killed in a crash early this morning in Refugio County. The DPS reports a truck tractor semi-trailer driven by 38-year-old Alberto Mata of La Villa struck three car haulers on U.S. Highway 77 southbound, 10 miles north of Refugio. A 2018 Nissan box truck driven by 31-year-old Michael No from Houston failed to control its speed and struck the back of the trailer. No was pronounced dead at the scene. The crash is under investigation. The Waterwell Cafe is partnering with the Salvation Army to serve up hot meals to the community this Thanksgiving. Organizers plan to serve at least 1,000 meals, both dine-in at the Salvation Army and delivered, to be sure no one is left hungry or alone this holiday season. Waterwell Cafe is rallying the community to join them in giving back. They're serving free meals and they're asking for donations of dessert, to-go boxes or plastic utensil kits to help keep things running smoothly. It's an inspiration not just for us, but for many others to also come on in and jump on board with us. Volunteers are also needed for meal delivery, serving and welcoming and fellowshipping with guests. To help, contact the Waterwell Cafe at 215 South Main Street in Victoria, or you can call them at 361-894-7206. You have more chances to watch the latest episode of Let's Grow Texas Ag. It'll be on KAVU again on December 1st at 3.30 p.m., KVCT on December 1st at 5.30 p.m. You can catch it on KMOL on Wednesday, November 20th at 6.30 p.m. and Sunday, November 24th at 10.30 a.m. and on KXTS this Friday at 10 p.m. and November 30th at 11.30 a.m. We are also streaming on Zeem, that's Z-E-A-M, so be sure to tune in to Let's Grow Texas Ag. But first, let's take a first look at your forecast. With First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis 
There is a cold front coming. Yeah. When, yeah. Mac? When? Yeah. It'll be here overnight. You go now. to sleep tonight, and in about 3 or 4 in the morning, the winds are going to change. They're going to get fairly gusty out of the north, and it'll be much cooler. We're looking for temperatures in the low 50s in the morning, but it's that wind that you're going to go, oh, that's a little chilly, and it's going to give us some cold mornings. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Mac, thank you. ERCOT's worst case models show Texas has a nearly 50% chance of rolling blackouts if severe winter weather hits. ERCOT says that would be the case if a storm is like the one that pummeled the state in December 2022. The chance of rolling blackouts jumps to nearly 80% if the state experiences a storm like the February 2021 polar plunge that killed more than 200 Texans. ERCOT officials said the chance of rolling blackouts has decreased since the 2021 winter storm due to state mandated power plant weatherization. Victoria residents have one less place for UPS customer service after the permanent closure of the customer service center on Laurent Street. The location at 3002 South Laurent Street hasn't offered customer service since October 7th. They now have a sign posted announcing the permanent closing. A UPS spokesperson confirmed the rest of the building will still operate to handle pickups and deliveries, but customers can no longer pick up or drop off packages there. Residents can visit three other drop off spots all on Navarro Street. Those are the two UPS stores along with the access point inside CVS at 2702 North Navarro Street. If you are thinking about joining the University of Houston Victoria this spring, we have news. The Jaguar Days might just help you make the call held each semester. This event gives future students a chance to explore UHV and see what it's all about. Director of Enrollment Management Oscar Torres says it's the perfect opportunity for anyone curious about becoming a Jaguar to check it out. It's a great opportunity for prospective students and their families to, get, to come see what being a UHV Jaguar is all about. We're going to have campus tours, dorm tours, they'll have the opportunity to speak with faculty and staff members, as well as get acquainted with some of the students who are on campus through student organizations, and overall just giving them a feeling of not only what being a UHV Jaguar is all about, but how they can visually see themselves at our campus. UHV's Jaguar Days is on Saturday, December 7th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. inside the University Commons building. As the Trump administration takes shape, Texas takes a back seat. You can read this full Texas Tribune article by visiting our website, crossroadstoday.com. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Then you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. Yeah. Stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, Alex Jones seeks to block the Onion's InfoWars purchase. Plus, President-elect Donald Trump has made his pick for the Medicare and Medicaid Services Administrator, a key federal agency that oversees health insurance coverage for more than 150 million Americans. The debate over incorporation is heating up in Bloomington with an election May 3rd. Residents are raising concerns about the push to incorporate the town. Well, my hopes are that we can go ahead and, uh, and try to rule the town ourselves and not let uh, corporations come in here and tell us what to do. What does it mean for the community? Join 25 News Now Sunrise anchor Carolina Astrain for Bloomington Boundaries. A 25 News Now Extra, Thursday night at 10.
Luke, I am so excited to host the CMA Awards again. Nashville, here we come. Hang tight, honey, got a pocket full of money and I'm headed straight home. Randy, what are you doing here? I'm hosting the CMA Awards with y'all. Country music's biggest night is almost here. Join us for all the excitement live from Nashville. It's the CMA Awards right here on KAVU ABC 25. Y'all ready to do this? I can pull off bell bottoms. Sure you can, buddy. <laughs> And you can play along by submitting your prediction for this year's winners of the CMA Awards. You can cast your vote on our website, crossroadstoday.com, and then see how your predictions match up when the awards are announced on Wednesday night, tomorrow night at tomorrow 7. Night. That's right. Alex Jones is asking a judge to stop the sale of the InfoWars website to The Onion. Jones called The Onion's winning $1.75 million bid, quote, sheer nonsense, unquote. Jones, a conspiracy theorist, accused the Onion and Sandy Hook Elementary School families of what he called collusive bidding. Jones defamed the Sandy Hook families by calling the 2012 massacre a hoax and the parents of the 21st graders actors. His request follows a similar push for an injunction by First United American Companies, which is affiliated with Jones through the sale of dietary supplements. Prosecutors in New York are making it clear President-elect Donald Trump's criminal hush money conviction should not go away. But the DA's office is willing to put it all on pause for now. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has more on these new developments. New York prosecutors say they're against dismissing Donald Trump's hush money criminal conviction, but in a court filing today, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office saying they are open to putting it on pause until after the president-elect's upcoming second term is over. Judge Juan Mershon giving prosecutors until today to share their thoughts on how to proceed with the case, which is tentatively scheduled for sentencing on November 26th. The prosecutors said they need to balance their respect for the office of the presidency and respect for the jury system. Because remember, Donald Trump was convicted by a jury of his peers of all 34 counts. However, they understand the reality here. In May, a jury found Trump guilty of all 34 felony counts related to a payment before the 2016 election to silence adult film actress Stormy Daniels about their long denied affair. His conviction carries a maximum sentence of up to four years in prison. There's a greater chance that we do not see Donald Trump uh, sentenced if the prosecution is joining in the application to pause the case because the case would be paused almost indefinitely. Uh, it, I can only imagine, be brought back up uh, after the presidency is done. Trump's lawyers arguing the case should be dismissed because a sitting president is immune from prosecution. Prosecutors arguing presidential immunity would not apply to a defendant who had already been convicted for conduct that is entirely private. While it is still up to the judge what happens next, Trump's team calling this latest move a, quote, total and definitive victory for Trump, vowing to get the case dismissed, quote, once and for all. If Judge Mershon tosses the conviction, he could order a new trial, which would be delayed at least four years until Trump leaves office or dismiss the indictment altogether. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. President-elect Donald Trump has picked Dr. Mehmet Oz to lead the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Oz is a cardiothoracic surgeon, but best known for his work in television on The Dr. Oz Show. Two years ago, he ran unsuccessfully for the U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania. Trump released a statement that says, in part, he has known Dr. Oz for many years, and he's confident Oz will fight to ensure every American receives the best possible health care. Trump went on to say Oz will work closely with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. to tackle what he calls the illness in, uh, in, industrial complex. Kennedy is Trump's pick to head the Department of Health and Human Services. Well, today we're talking about a lung infection that affects thousands of people every year. It's called community acquired pneumonia. The CDC reports cases are growing nationwide. 
community acquired pneumonia is a lung infection that you can catch in everyday settings like your home, work, or school. Bacteria, viruses, or fungi can cause it and it spreads through coughs and sneezes. The infection makes breathing difficult. Symptoms may also include a cough with mucus, fever, chills, and chest pain. While cases caused by a virus don't need medication, some people may need antibiotic pills. Others will require hospital care for oxygen and stronger treatments. The best defense is prevention. Get a yearly flu shot and add the pneumonia vaccine, especially if you are older than 65 or have chronic health issues. With this Medical Minute, I'm Melissa Adon. Well, good evening, everybody. It's 55 degrees. How about that? It's getting a little chilly out there. That's because we have dry air that blew in and made it a rather warm day. But things are going to be changing as soon as tomorrow. We've got we're up to 87 today, which actually compares to a ties the record for this date. But coming up, we'll be talking about that north wind and how cool will it get. All that coming up in just a moment. Nice day today, but a little warm. These are the high temperatures that occurred across the state today. As you can see right here, we topped out at 90, at rather 87 degrees and 90 down in Brownsville. However, if you look behind the frontal system, they were only in the 70s and Amarillo's high temperature was 54. Well, tonight it's going to be getting a little cooler. You can see how Amarillo will get down to freezing 29 degrees freezing in Lubbock. We're going to be into the 50s, low 50s. And of course, it's that brisk wind that's going to make it feel rather chilly when you head out the door in the morning. Now, the high tomorrow is 74 degrees compared to 87 today. That's that north wind that's going to blow down through here and give us a little bit of a cooling trend, something we haven't seen in November. Kind of interesting. Across the country, we have to see that we are absolutely high and dry. Nothing's happening in our direction. However, in the east, we've got the first big snowstorm of the season. You can see the low winding up there, and here it comes in for the big pitch. Uh, you can see the snow in the blue here, dropping, 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 all the way down into the Carolinas. And so from the Carolinas to the northeast, they're going to be getting some their first snow, big snow of the season. Meanwhile, the bomb low, the bombogenesis uh, is what they call it. It's a deep area of low pressure, slams into California. And look at that rain, 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 massive rain from San Francisco north all the way up to Seattle. Uh, that's going to be one for the record books. For us, we're just doing fine, peachy keen, absolutely gorgeous. Looking at uh, 59 in the morning down along the coast, but only a 72 as a high temperature. Notice we'll get a gusty northeast wind by tomorrow. We'll get down to 54 in Cuero, but your high is only 72. Abundant sunshine, still very pleasant, but things are, shall we say, a little cold at night because uh, tomorrow's high 74, and then the, the following morning will be down to 40 and then 76 and then down to 44. So we've got three cold nights down into the 40s, but the days times will be fairly moderate, very 
very comfortable in the mid 70s. And then as we get to the weekend, we'll start warming back up into the 80s. And then uh, we'll look to see if we can find any rain within the next seven days. But so far, we're not doing so good. That's your seven day forecast reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that with your phone and put Crossroads today on your phone. Hey, they're happy uh, in Refugio, right? No, Max? <laughs> nah, it's actually Victoria West there, oh, Max. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> For basketball, right? But ah. hey, they had some hoops action there tonight, but they were a little happy. They got a good win there tonight from Victoria West. So I'll highlight this game a lot more coming up in sports. Now, yesterday I mentioned all the 2A and 3A matchups here, but today I'm going to talk about all the 4A and 5A matchup this week here for area football here in the area playoff round. So, here's all the matchups in 4A Division 1. The Cowan Sand Crabs, after their win versus the Pata Hawks, they'll face a tough challenge versus the Davenport Wolves. That'll be Friday at 7.30 p.m. at Bastrop's Memorial Stadium. Then staying in 4A Division 1, Bay City, yes, they had a win 87 to nothing over Doggo there last week. They'll face Canyon Lake on Friday at 7 p.m. at Austin's Veterans Stadium. Then in 4A Division II, Cuero will face the Navarro Panthers on Friday. That will be at 7.30 p.m. at Floresville's Eschenberg Field. And finally here, Victoria West. They're going to be facing the Alice Coyotes. That will be Friday here at 7 p.m. at Beeville. Veterans Memorial Stadium and speaking of Victoria West this team again been through a lot of chaos and change here the past couple weeks again we have talked about it last week the transportation of the band cheer and dance squads good news is for all those teams they're going to be able to go to this week's games again as well over to and again but for the players right and Trevor Robinson and wide receiver Tristan Menard they're just focused on the task at hand and trying to see if they can get a big win over Alice this week. Everybody's going to watch their keys and everything else. Just be careful. Um, if we do our jobs right and keep the energy that we had last game, it should be a win for us. You know, just be fearless, you know? Just go out there with our head on fire. West hoping to get some revenge against Alice on Friday night. Again, they lost to them last year in the playoffs, so which Wish both Robinson and Bernard luck there in the next round. Now, over to some big news in our area tonight. The Goliad Tiger Reds volleyball team, they are officially moving to the 3A Division I state title after they beat the Grand View Zebras in straight three sets. And the Tiger Reds won the first set 25 to 22, the second set 25 to 17, and then the third set 25 to 17. Goliad is back in the state title there for the first time back since 2023, so not so long ago, folks. They're facing the Bushland there in the next round there they played each other in a rematch there in 2020 so again for both of these teams this will be again Friday there at 2 p.m. at Garland Texas there so again for Goliath 
Can they get it done there, there in Coach Jess Oldham? Get another title? We'll see you there on Friday afternoon. And then some hoops action. The Victoria West basketball team, they face the Ray Texans here tonight at Victoria West High School. And they're looking to win back-to-back -back games after they beat Fort Bend Willow Ridge there on Friday. They got some big contributions from Ty Katzen and senior leader Bo Woods, who helped this team get a big-time win here tonight for Victoria West. They're going to be playing the Brandy Broncos. That'll be Friday there at 1.30 p.m. Again, the time and the place of the area will be still be determined. And finally tonight, the college football playoff rankings were released here. I kind of mentioned we talked about it. Here is what it looks like here for the top five, then the next one and going into. Still, the top five kind of just remains the same. Oregon is at number one. Ohio State is a number two. Texas is a number three. Penn State's at four. And then Indiana is at five. And then we go down here to six through ten. Here's we look at this way. Notre Dame is six. Alabama is now up to number seven. Miami's there, number eight. Ole Miss, number nine. Georgia, after that win over Tennessee, gets up back in the top ten at number ten. And Tennessee, after losing to Georgia, drops four spots to number 11. And Boise State, because they are huge right now, they're at number 12 right now. Again, this is a 12-team playoff there for everyone just to know they're in that group of five spot right now. So Boise State most likely again with the conference champions again how this playoff is it's the top four teams that win their conference get into the playoff there as a for a bye situation then it's kind of seeding afterwards. So for Boise State they would be at the number four spot right now if the playoff ended there today that is crazy to think about but we still got a, a month left to go so we'll see what happens going on from there. And that's going to do it here for sports. Don and Shauna back to you. All right, Max, thank you, and stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, we'll take a last look at your weather. Plus, a New York teen plays the piano to soothe shelter animals. Thirty fourth housekeeping Olympics draws a crowd at the Michelob Ultra Arena in Las Vegas. Thirteen teams competed in this annual event. The challenges included a bed making race, a mop and vacuum relay, an obstacle course on a floor cleaner, a spirit dance competition, and they need to add folding a fitted sheet. Uh, if they could talk, the four legged friends at one New York City shelter might say thank you for the music, and it's all thanks to a very special volunteer. At 121 years old, Vita We Animal Rescue has cared for animals through wars and pandemics, but over the past six months, 14 year old Zen Hung has added something new. Once a week, Zen brings her keyboard to the shelter to play music for the dogs and cats still waiting for their forever homes. A seasoned pianist who's performed at Carnegie Hall, Zen says light jazz works wonders for calming anxious pups. I wondered about that. Yeah, but now we know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like jazz. Mm -hmm. Calm down the puppies. There you go. There yeah. <laughs> now we know. Why keep, not? Keep it calms it us down. Yeah. yeah, it does. Are you giving us jazz that, that a cold front's coming? I'm jazzed up about it because <laughs> it's going to happen tomorrow morning. About three or four in the morning, the winds will be shifting around to the north. It'll be rather gusty in the morning hours and it'll be much cooler. It down to the low 50s and then down into the 40s the following morning. So bundle up in the morning hours of the day. 
All right. Well, how about having a glass of pizza wine to oh, wash down that wow. turkey this Thanksgiving? No, pizza Hut has partnered with a winery to create wine. a tomato-based wine no. that it says captures the essence of a slice of pizza. Oh. According to the product's description, the red wine offers hints of basil, oregano, and a whisper of garlic. It is wine. <laughs> but they say it actually tastes more like a white wine when it's chilled. I don't know. The limited edition wine is sold either by the bottle or part of a gift box that is packaged, yes, like a pizza box. That's so okay. I don't know. No, I don't, that's wow. a, I don't yeah. think that's there's a, a lot of one. takers on yeah, the set here. I don't, yeah, I don't <laughs> say no to that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight for 25 News Now at 10. Join Carolina Ostroin, meteorologist Parker Cox, 25 News Now Sunrise starting at 5 a.m. Good night, everybody.